Hello and welcome back to another Before You Buy. Today I want to talk about five things I think you should bear in mind before you buy a network attached storage device for Plex. I personally think a NAS is the best device to enjoy your media utilizing Plex Media Server. It's got a huge number of benefits that allow you to enjoy things in a way that are currently present in the likes of Amazon Prime and Netflix or that slick glossy user interface but without using subscription payments and utilizing your TV shows rather than relying on a third party to go, oh, this month you can watch that, but you can't watch that, that's all mine. So, although I like Plex Media Server and I like using it with a NAS, I know it's not for everyone and there are reasons why you might or might not go for a NAS as your Plex Media Server device of choice. And that's what today's video is about. So without further ado, let's go through our points. The first thing that you should bear in mind when looking at a NAS for Plex Media Server is that the hardware is gonna look underwhelming. Now for anyone that's ever utilized an old Mac Mini they've had knocking around for Plex, or an Nvidia Shield, or they're utilizing some old computer, an old PC they had for years and they bunged it in the attic and it's running there in the background, you will look at the specs of a lot of NAS, hard, uh, NAS systems and go, what? That's like a, that CPU, what, that memory, what? Why am I, 500 pound? And I get that a lot. I read it in the comments a lot. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to respond. A video a day kills me. But if you go into the comments of any Plex video, you will find at least 50% of the comments are, are you having a laugh, a Soleron? The reason is, NASs are designed to be on 24 seven. They're designed to be on for days, weeks, months, um, years at a time, often never being powered down apart from firmware updates, which is power down, power up instantaneously. Also, they are designed for read and, uh, random read-write access. So they have to be designed to power on at a moment's notice, switching from idle to active exceedingly quickly. Lastly, because these um, devices are on for such a long time, they, they are more prone to heat generation, vibration, dust, all that sort of stuff. And they are designed to be very compact with excellent airflow through them with components that are designed for the long haul. And if they're not designed for the long haul, the system around it has to be wrapped around it in a way where there'll be no degradation long term on the performance. Now, desktop PCs, they aren't designed to be on for active utilization or random boot up sequence whilst being idle for that length of time. They're also not designed to be on for that length of time and maintain power efficiency, keyword efficiency. So the amount of power they're consuming will be higher than a NAS. The amount of degradation of that kind of performance and that kind of behavior will be more, degra will be more degrading to the internal components than it will be on a NAS. All of the components are not designed in unison to be within that ecosystem in the same way they are in a NAS and that's why NAS hardware seems to be more expensive for the hardware you're getting. Obviously you can still get Xeons and Ryzen 7s and mad CPUs but the pricing is still scaled as well. A PC with the same hardware that you would find in a NAS is generally about 30 or 40 percent cheaper at least. You have to remember that the NAS isn't just about the CPU and the memory, it's about everything that's wrapped around it in software and hardware to maintain that keyword efficiency and another one, longevity. It's good to be able to endure. So bear that in mind that if you are switching from your custom server for media or your custom old PC and you're moving over to a NAS for Plex, don't be so jarred by the hardware that's being utilized. There is a reason for that and that is why. Another common misconception of Plex Media Server is that term subscription or free media server. You buy the NAS and you never have to pay for anything again. That's not strictly true sometimes and a lot of that is to do with the Plex Pass. If you are getting a, a NAS for a Plex Media Server, you don't actually have to pay for anything. You can use it for free, chuck on all your media and enjoy it. But there are certain features, certain services included within Plex that you have to pay a monthly subscription for. And that is called a Plex Pass. They generally do a deal every Black Friday or Christmas, a lifetime membership, 30% off. Take advantage of them because a Plex Pass is actually quite useful. Of all the things it adds, and it adds lots of stuff to do with digital TV shows and um, add-on services and other little bits and bobs and features, but the most important one is to do with transcoding. That is a file being adapted in one of many ways to be more suitable to the client, the connected device. So say you're using a mobile phone to access a movie and you're using a limited data plan or you're using an old phone with a tiny screen and you're accessing 
um, that last Star Wars film, um, that awful film that was, um, if you were watching that movie and you've got an original Blu-ray 4K mental size version of it that's about, I don't know, 200 gig or something stupid, you're watching that film and that film on your NAS is massive and you're watching it on this tiny phone with a 4G data plan. What you need is that file changed and by changed I mean they should change that movie entirely but don't get me started. They should, that file gets adapted into a smaller resolution, a lower bandwidth, uh, a different file type. It will be adapted by the NAS, reshaped, so that when it's sent to your mobile phone, it's a smaller file, it's a more playable file, and a file type that this device here can play. That is transcoding in a nutshell. But most NASes that have got a Plex Media Server account can't transcode using the transcoding engine. Now, a CPU that does all the job, it's got all the frequencies, it's got the cores and all that stuff, but the CPU, some of them have embedded graphics. In terms of NASes, that's called a transcoding engine, but what that means is it's a bit of the CPU that is designed to handle graphical data. That is embedded graphics. That is why some CPUs have embedded graphics. You find it a lot on laptops and stuff like that. Now, Plex will ask the CPU to transcode the file. Now, if you want to use the transcoding engine, that bit of the CPU, to do the job, you need to have a Plex Pass. Plex Pass will allow um, the CPU to use the hardware transcoding in a Plex um, uh, transfer. But if you don't have a Plex Pass, you're not able to take advantage of transcoding in that same way. And often, even with a Plex Pass, you still need to modify or at least enable the drivers on the NAS CPU to do that transcoding. But one of the key reasons to have a Plex Pass is to enable transcoding, to allow you to adapt files to be more suitable to the client devices, which means you have to pay extra, either with a monthly subscription or grabbing one of those lifetime memberships whenever they're on offer. So bear that in mind. Although Plex does allow you to utilize its services for free across the client devices and enjoy your media, with well, that scraped metadata and stuff, bear in mind that to take advantage of hardware transcoding, you are going to need a Plex Pass. Otherwise, you may utilize software transcoding, which is when the CPU uses raw power to do the job, which it's not suitable for, unlike a GPU, and you'll end up using way more CPU power than you needed to to get the job done. Another point that a lot of people overlook when setting up a Plex media server NAS is that when you use Plex on a NAS to enjoy your media, even if you are enjoying a movie here on my phone in the same household to the NAS over there, Plex requires external access. It has servers for metadata, and a lot of the time it still bounces a little ping to Plex. The result is, if you have aggressive um, firewall settings on your router, you know, unless your NAT type but just generally not allow the port connections, chances are that it won't work. Even though you're on the same network and you can see the NAS, see the folder structure, see everything over the network, you just cannot get Plex to work. The reason is, is a lot of people find that their router is blocking Plex. So you're going to have to go into the router, find the port that Plex is utilizing, and open that up. Otherwise, if you are trying to use the Plex media server, you just can't access the media because Plex is too busy trying to touch base. So bear that in mind to make sure your router sends are not too aggressive for your Plex media server NAS or that the, um, the router isn't seeing it as a malicious activity. So make sure of that in advance. This is a, often overlooked when I talk a lot about the right CPU for Plex Media Server NAS. If you're gonna get a Plex NAS, you can actually run Plex on quite a low-end CPU. There's some ARM 64-bit Realtek ones that are incredibly modest processors and they can run Plex to a lesser degree, although Plex will use a lot of their CPU. But one area I talk about less is the memory. A lot of NASes you buy these days Memory is becoming real, a, a big, big buzzword. In the same way, and I've mentioned this in other videos, that you might be watching this on YouTube via Chrome. You might be using uh, Google Chrome just to watch this. Do me a favor right now, and I'll wait. Go down uh, to the bar there if you're using a Windows system. Go down to the main taskbar at the bottom. Right-click, go to um, your task manager. Just open it up. 
have a look at how much memory Chrome is using right now. I don't know how many tabs you've got up there, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Close some of those. But look how much memory Chrome is using right now. Memory these days, applications are just using it all, and Plex is no different. If you are utilizing a NAS with Plex Media Server, chances are you are using a lot of memory. Most people will say that you should have at least two gig of memory on your NAS to utilize Plex. That isn't to say that Plex Media Server needs two gig of uh, memory to run, but you need enough memory to run the NAS system, to run the storage array, to run the system before Plex Media Server. So minimum two gig, but I would strongly recommend four gig of memory in Plex because Plex has become a hungry beast on its own. And the larger file types you run, the minute you try cross the line into 1080p or even 4k media whether you are transcoding or not you are going to get real big like measures from memory being utilized by plex so bear that in mind if you are going to get a plex media server nas or you're going to convert an existing nas into a plex nas two gig at least four gig recommended of memory Finally, this is one a lot of people overlook, and this isn't just to do with Plex Media Server either, this is just generally with anyone buying a NAS device, plan ahead. I can't stress this enough. So many of you buy a two bay NAS, you stick two drives inside, you stick it in a RAID 1, so you've got a mirror there, so you've got your redundancy, and then suddenly you go nuts putting movies on it, or you transfer your entire media collection onto it, and then you've got all the metadata being built in your library for all your family members, and you need to plan ahead, not only in terms of having enough memory, as mentioned, because if you've got multiple users accessing the NAS at one time, they are going to be sharing the bandwidth. They're going to be sharing the access to the same hard drive array, but also the amount of data you're going to be generating. You should always have at least, I would say, 2.5 times the amount of space, um, whatever amount of data or movies you're going to put on, times that by two and a half, that should last you two to three years. If you're thinking further than that, make that math because you are going to grow that data quite substantially as you add more media. Think of every box set. Think of every movie. Think of trilogies. Think of Star Wars again. Oh, I never really got over that. But what I'm saying is if you are going to be setting up a NAS for Plex Media Server, plan ahead. Now, there are several ways to do that. One, make sure you use a storage pool that will allow you to expand the storage later to add more drives when you create a volume. Check out my whole video on storage pools and volumes. Make sure it's expandable. Um, uh, uh, next, on top of that, if you are going to buy, say, a four bay NAS, that's quite a convenient way to put two drives on day one and add more drives as your storage grows. If you can extend your budget and you're already looking at a two bay with two drives inside, see how much a four bay with the same hardware is going to cost. Generally, you'll find the price difference is only about 130 to 150 quid, which I know is a lot of money. But if you already think that this system is going to last you five to 10 years, that you're going to be accessing this data for that length of time, divide that number, that 130, 150, by those years, by those months if you must. Because if you don't plan ahead, what will happen is, your system, be it a two bay, will fill up. And when that happens, you're gonna to have to remove one of those drives and install a new drive or put an expansion and ultimately spend three to five times more <coughs> in expanding later on than you will on day one just by having two empty bays, just by choosing a storage pool um, system that is expandable. Bear that in mind, plan ahead for the terabytes, for the growth, and the connected users. Because Plex on a NAS, once you kick it off, it's really handy. Whether you're utilizing it for Fire Stick or just on mobile phones. And if you are gonna go into this and you are gonna buy this kind of hardware of buying a NAS for your Plex Media Server, plan ahead. It's a little bit more. You know, chop a couple of terabytes off your maximum drives. Do it that way. Get that money from somewhere into the expandability later on. You will save yourself so many headaches later. But those, for me, are the five most important things to bear in mind if you're going to buy, buy buying a NAS for Plex Media Server. Now, 
I've talked about Plex a lot in the last couple of years. Hopefully in the description, there'll be links to the Plex fixes and performance upgrade tips that I've presented in previous videos. I'm hoping to revisit that with four or five extra new tips I've learned over the last year or so. So do check that out when it goes live. But if you've enjoyed the video, I found it helpful, click like. If you wanna learn more, click subscribe. And otherwise, I will see you next time.